Hello everybody, I am Brayman19 and welcome to a brand new series in Empire Total War. This time we'll be hitting Great Britain, so I suggest everybody make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on this video so that you can make sure that you are keeping up with all the latest episodes because this is going to be a very long and a very fun uh, campaign. So anyways, I will go ahead and say we are doing the World Domination Mode, which is means to capture and hold 50 regions by the end of the year 1799. Including the region shown, it's just England, which is the main, you know, the southern half of the uh, British, you know, the British Isles here. Uh, I guess the main island, okay? The best, best way to put it. Um, so, just, uh, just a little something. This is way different, though, than what we've been doing with the long or the short campaigns. I don't have to take over certain provinces. Like, I don't have to go for France. Or Spain, or the Netherlands, or, you know, Iceland, or anything. I just have to go and get 50 regions. Now, we've done this before, uh, but we did it in long campaigns. So this time, though, I'm going to focus on trying to go all 100 years or until every province is mine. I don't just want world domination. I want world, like, I want to conquer the world. Um, that may or may not be possible. I'm not hinging the... Uh, I'm not hinging the complete victory on that. Again, 50 regions is like the bare minimum of things I want to do to accomplish here. What I really want is to conquer the whole thing, or and then my middle tier is to just go the full 99 years or 100 years and get as much as possible. So that's how we'll be judging this one along. Anyways, let me go ahead and jump into the nation description. Great Britain is not a natural creation, but the marriage of separate kingdoms and peoples. The new nation has been through a century of unparalleled turbulence, an unwelcome joining of Scotland and England, religious strife, civil wars, an executed king, military dictatorship, a populist monarch restored, and the overthrow of a second king. Less than 15 years ago, the hated Catholic James II was forced into exile in the Glorious Revolution and a Protestant monarchy restored. A short, vicious war in Ireland put paid to any chance of a Catholic Stuart restoration. Nonetheless, the exiled James Stuart has sympathizers, the Jacobites, throughout Britain. Despite, or perhaps because of, this turbulent history, Britain is an engine driving the scientific and cultural advancement of Northern Europe. Turmoil fuels creativity. As an island nation, Britons have always looked to, as Shakespeare puts it, the Silver Sea, which serves it in the office of a wall, or as a moat defensive to a house. Britain's strength lies at sea, but in trade and colonization as much as naval power. Trade taxes pay for the navy. The navy allows unhindered trade. The English Channel keeps the French at bay and to a lesser extent the Dutch. With Dutchman William III on the first British throne, there is ambivalence in the traditional rivalry with the Netherlands. The English and Scots like to think that they can sleep safe, that no foreign invader or tyranny need worry them. They are partly right, but only as long as there is no centralized continental power. A nation that can unite the resources of Europe will surely crush the dream of Albion. This, then, is the fundamental aim of Britain, to side with the weak in Europe against the strong and steal as many overseas possessions as possible while doing it. So, pretty much it's just basically saying that, you know, if a Napoleon type person comes along or, you know, if a power were to take over most of Europe, then Britain's stronghold on trade could be, you know, in you know left in flux. So yeah, anyways, there's six starting regions that we have. I'm trying to figure out where they all are. I'm thinking England, Scotland, Ireland, the Hudson Bay, and then Jamaica probably. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and the six is probably the Bahamas or something. So yeah. And just a heads up, this is the very, this is a very, the reason why I'm doing a world domination this time around is this is a very special point. This is, we have done all the other campaigns. This is the last one, so it makes sense we would try to do something special. Anyways, let's start. I spoke too much. Your first priorities as an island nation should be to ensure you have adequate naval defenses in place as a strong navy is the key to protecting your shores. Beyond that, maintain friendly relations with other Protestant nations, such as the United Provinces, Hanover, Prussia, and Sweden, 
as the ever-present threats from Catholic France and Spain may require joint action by allies in the near future. In addition to securing your position at home, look to the preservation of your colonies in America and the Caribbean. France and Spain are always interested in expanding their overseas territories, and your colonists will provide easy pickings for less scrupulous nations, if left unprotected. There is also much unexploited territory in the Indian subcontinent. Gain a foothold here before your rivals do. The once mighty Mughal Empire is on the verge of falling apart, but it is still important to move swiftly. The up-and-coming Maratha Confederacy is ready to pounce and forge an empire of their own, so allying with them against the Mughals could be a useful strategy. It is especially vital to act in India before the French gain a foothold and begin to work against you as they have in America. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different this time around. Normally I just kind of go it alone for a little while or something like that. I definitely am going to still sit back and focus on increasing everything I can. So don't think I'm not going to do that. Um, I am going to pull these guys over to here. Um, let's pull these guys to here, to there, pull one sloop to here, Isaac Newton, academic, he has more on industrial, but, I am the instrument of your will, place of learning and culture, put him here, anything else I need to be paying attention to? There's a very big problem over here. Catholics. Okay. All right. Not too much to complain about right now. Yep, there's a trading port there, and there's another trading port there. Yeah, military dockyard here. I'm just getting an idea for what all I've got. Let's look over here. Yeah, I got a little, a few here. Make ready. Let's go here. Okay. I'll probably end up keeping this as a military place until I can take over something. Um. Okay. Here's what I need to do. First and foremost. We need to focus on cobbled roads, or any kind of road, we don't have them, everywhere. There you go, all done. I can't afford anything else this turn. Let's go ahead and talk to, well actually, peasant farms there. Anything in the, uh, over here that I can do? Yes, there you go. I want to get as much as I can done. How is this going? Yeah, it'll change over, and then I'll probably come down here. My first, and not my first thing to do is focus on my income. So I'm gonna go in here and uh, what wrong thing? I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna talk to every nation I can to get a trade deal. Um, there's one there. Let's talk to Russia. Get another trade. With, oh, can't do any trade with them right yet. Um, Ottomans and the Mughal are unfriendly. France is hostile, of course. Okay, yeah, you can move through my territory unhindered. Um, me and Connaught. Savoy.
No, I'm not gonna pay you anything. Okay. Now that we got that, let's find out who we can ally with. Best thing to do right out the gate is ally with anybody who will take it. So far, not very many. Scotland, no, they're not gonna do that deal though. Um, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that's okay. Um, So the main idea is try to get some more of these people to be more or less friends. I'm just surprised I can't get anybody. Oh, there's a trade agreement with uh, Prussia. Can't ally with them, probably because they're with Austria. Okay. Good first turn. It's in the turn. And right now, we're just going to focus on our own internal stuff. It's okay if I waste three or four years on this. Uh, it's more important to have a strong start like that and then work my way out and then uh, we'll see how things go. Um, yeah, I'll take that with you, Ottomans. I have no quarrel with you. Yet. So what I'm focused on is just getting alliances with anybody that will take it. Anybody who doesn't. I'm going to start focusing on going after it. Okay, inner war on the side of my ally against the Iroquois. So now I'm at war. I'm definitely going to have to help my ally here. I could probably just about only have one big army. And, uh... You know, in the British Isles, and don't have to worry about anything else. One huge full stack there. Missions. The reward of the 13 colonies. They say they want Georgia, Cherokee Territory, and New France. If I do... So, New France, Georgia, and Cherokee Territory. If I get those, they will join me. Let's see. War was declared. United Provinces in Spain, of course. Prussia and Austria. Poland and Poland, Lithuania and Austria. Those farms are done. It would probably be better for me to do this. There you go. Best to do that right there. Go ahead and knock it on out. Um, let's do this big one. Go and get that opera house going. Get the six right to go here. Protecting my ports. I don't want them just to come waltzing in on me. Um, there's a lot of things that could be built here. I'm more focused on this town, uh, on my on London first. In the turn. So, like, I won't be jumping after France first unless they declare war on me, and I need to really worry about them. If I do, I just jump. I can then take an army right across the strait, or right across uh, the channel. Take over Paris. Once Paris falls then everything they have overseas should fall with it. If not, then it'll I'll move on to the next place that'll take it. Denmark and Sweden are at war already. Hoping the colonies develop themselves to withstand the uh, Iroquois start here. Yep, Iroquois have already taken New York. 
And they have abandoned Philadelphia. Just like that. The pirates would be a good start for somebody to take on too. Basic roads. New world. Okay. Let's look over here. Nothing to be done. Let's go over here. Um, it'll cost me 2,000 and that's all I can really do. Because it'll cost me 1,000 to do that. So you're already bringing 6,400 in per. Um, I'm going to divest myself of these troops. They're not needed. Matter of fact, I want to get rid of you too. I don't really. I just don't need you. Um, what about out here? Out here, I'm a little bit more worried. Colonial Dragoons, Line Infantry. I come in here and recruiting Colonial Line Infantry. Yeah, it might be, might be important. Hmm, okay. So in the turn. Can't promise any battles in this one. I'm not really focused on battles. About three to four episodes in, though, I'm pretty sure it'll be battles galore, though, just because I'll have one full army and just running them everywhere. The idea is to end up put it, starting out with one full army in each theater and building up to two, you know, well, especially in the New World, building up to two and building out from there. Empiricism's done. It's more important to go ahead and do this 2500 there. Smallpox. Construction of cobbled roads is now done. Uh, Crimean Connet was already destroyed. That's 750. Dublin. Yeah, that's as far as it can be right now. And there goes another thousand. Got a little bit left over. Is there anything I could possibly build? Nothing in the realm of four thousand. Because I'd really like to give London a settlement fortification. I'll probably start building troops in 1703 in the New World. I'm not going to worry about it in the Old World yet. Again, the most, the biggest thing I'm worried about is just building all the best tax buildings. Anything that's going to keep pumping me out, scientists, great building there when I can do that. Trading ports, food, Ratha Confederacy against Portugal. Nah, I'm not even going to worry about that. Let the Maratha take Goa. And I don't really care about Portugal either. I'm trying to stay out of war for right now against major powers. I'd rather try to sneak up on the Maratha anyway. One of your sea trade routes is under attack from an enemy fleet. Without your intervention, they'll raid all shipping and take any goods and income. Dang, she sounds serious. Yeah, it's just the uh, it's just them. It's not that big a deal. We'll start here, go at the Royal Observatory.
spend four thousand on a wall for a fort. Um, this would be smart to do something in. Uh, what's making more right now? Cotton's making fifteen. Tobacco's making fourteen. Oh, this is sugar. Uh, sugar's what's making what? Sugar's making fifteen. And coffee's making 10. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. We're going to the sugar plantation. Wish I could recruit out of this myself and I'd start... I'd make my own army and make them run across and do something. Yeah, I'd have to go across it here in Wyandotte if I wanted to do that. Cost me fifteen hundred to put that in. What do you require? Yes. Go ahead and have that guy walk down. Anything? No. Okay, guys. Well, I think I'm going to end this one right here. Not much else I can really do. Um, guess I could spend it on that just to make sure it was spent on something useful. Com you know, completing out the uh, other four. The fourth one there. Um, we'll give it some time. Like I said, 1703 is when I'm going to really worry about troops need to be built. And, uh,. See, there'd be any new buildings. Two, 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 yeah. So we're still two turns away from needing to build anything new. So we'll have to wait till then. All right, guys, appreciate you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, and subscri like subscribe, and comment. So that way you can check out these videos as they come out. And I will see you all next time.